Hi, you guys. It's Acrylic Painting Monday. This is Ginger and uh, Cook and uh, John Little, and we're we're here to present you a fabulous uh, tropical painting and using palette knife. And uh, every once in a while, we want to uh, do a YouTube video with palette knife, and this is we're going to use a combination of brush and palette knife. We're using some of the Holbein luminous colors like rose and. Uh, yellow and luminous. Look at your green. hands. And look at my hand. Do you see that? Uh, <laughs> when you use a palette knife, you get, you get, um, okay, you get do, messy. Do all people get messy? Yes. I then I, I can't yes, use they do. I mean, look at my finger like that. Yes, you do, right? Um, but that's all right. <laughs> we, we, you're going to have fun with this, and this is a happy painting. It's a, uh, uh, you know, I. These flowers are beautiful and bright, and they have great contrast. Yes. And um, and that's it. One you want to learn how to do the how to when to use a brush, when to use a palette knife, how to how to just really make your colors uh, pop and feel um, special, and um, just when to use the bright colors and when you want to tone them down. If they're a little bit bright for you, just uh, use your regular colors and don't use any of the luminous ones, and it will they will tone down. Or for instance, like is this dried? I notice is this dried? This got a little brighter green than I maybe wanted, right? So what I could do with that? Now people sit there and say, "Well, I, this is a little bit brighter green than I want." All right. So all I have to do is glaze over that. Say with something, say called raw umber, um, and a soft brush. Make sure that it's completely dry. You want a soft, soft like a. a like a watercolor brush type brush like that, and uh, let's see. We just we you just want you want water here now. Look, I just want to tone that green down just a little bit with raw umber. See that? And I don't have to do much. Just leave some of that showing. See how I just tone that down just a bit. But I still like I still got the effect of the bright color. So never worry if you get something you get a little carried away with your colors. You can always fix it. I get carried away sometimes too. And that's all right. Um just know what you know, you just just know when to where when your to of interest is and where you're trying to have people look. Because that's the key, isn't it, John? Yep. It says so what you know, what what are you want the viewer to go around? What are you yeah. featuring, right? And um, uh, I, I'll tell you when I when this dries a little bit more, I might put a little bit of light yellow right there. You might see that in the picture later. Let's see. Here's a little bit of um, uh, um, that color is uh, Australian sienna. A little bit of orange. I, I might want to put something bright right there. See, but you can tell better when things dry. Uh, and that's not as bright as I want. I know that sounds crazy, but, um, uh, well, maybe it doesn't sound crazy. Let's just... Not when it comes to you. Let's try a little yellow right there. Ah, there, see? We tone something down and we brighten something else up. And that's what it's all about anyway. So have fun with the colors. We're using thalo green, uh, thalo blue, ultra, uh, using... Um, Mauve from Holbein, but you can use Zazine Purple. We're using like luminous pink, luminous rose, um, titanium white, zinc white. And again, have fun with this. This is 12 by 12. 12 by 12. And uh, wait till you see how we do this. I think you're going to be so pleased. All right, guys. Let's head on down to the art table and start painting. All right. Green that down. So splash some color on as quick as you so can. We got, so we've got a white canvas, and we know that um, uh, we want to. When you're painting with, we're just a palette knife painting. So I just about a third of. I know I want to come down about this far with the. I'm going to have a, a mountain like this, something like this, something back here like this. I've got my my ocean doing this to the corner, kind of this C C shape. Um, like that. And there's going to be a beach part right here, and then this is all hill. Okay, so this is this is pretty straightforward. But the trick is when you're doing palette knife, don't make the whole thing palette knife. We're gonna um, we're gonna paint the sky in first, and what we want to do is we want to have it darker and lighter as we get down to this bottom part here. All right. 
So I would say that that's... That's the crux of the situation? That's, you know, you've got this corner here. Here's the uh, little bit past. Here's halfway. And she's going a little bit past here with that. Turning it around like that, so you can find the uh, the traceable on this uh, on our website, acrylic painting with Ginger Cook. Um, if you don't want to try freehanding that in, we want to take a large brush. Um, I've got a um, this is a silver number twelve, and I want to take just I'm just going to make the background color. So um, we're just going to start out with uh, titanium white, and um, I think the easiest thing for us to do is to just wet the paint brush and take some titanium white and just paint this whole sky in like that. A big brush like that. Big brush will help you keep it nice and smooth. All right, see what I'm doing? That's what they call okay. a bright, a bright brush. It's a bright, big, bright brush. Someone says, when do you use the big brushes? You really want a big uh, canvas for a... Um, a palette knife painting because you need a lot of you need lots of room. You want to do this on something little, you'll just kind of have a mess. All right, see that? So I have that that white color, and I I think I'm going to go ahead and uh, put a color some white down here too, and where my ocean goes, simply because I want a load of paint on this canvas, but I don't want to do an underpainting with that color. I just want to have some white on this area right here too, where my water's going to be. All right, so if I start with the, um, this is a turquoise blue, right, and white, so that's, let's see, that's that's pretty dark, but um, I'm going to go over this white paint, so as I mix it, do you see what happens? As I mix it with the top, it's going to get all the way across like this, and if I just keep uh, overlapping and coming on down over this white as I get down toward the bottom it has to be lighter doesn't it okay you see how it just you want to go all the way across like that and uh, so the darkest part is up here at the top like that and then as you come on down if you're going to go you can't keep going back up so if you're going to do that then Keep overlapping slightly until you get in all the way off the canvas and all the way off the canvas. Maybe that's the easiest way to show you how to do that. And because we already had white on this, that'll be the simplest way. And I'll even get a little bit more. Well, we're going to have some um, color down here too, so I'm not even going to worry about that. So that's my that's going to be my uh, my sky, and that's as simple as I can make it. Now I'm going to take the same color here. And I want to pull that for this back blue color because that's going to reflect the where the ocean is going to be. Okay, so I just want that right there. So that was pretty easy. Yes and yes. Um, I want some ultramarine blue, and I want to take it right here like this, and I think I'll wipe most of the paint off like this off my brush, and then I'll just take ultramarine blue. And I'm going to come up here like this, and I'm going to paint this. Um, well, it's this dark blue. Let's see. Let's take a little bit of white paint now, and uh, just as we come on down, we'll just do this, right, like that. So I'm going into titanium white, and um, come on up here like that, and. Uh, Maybe I'll take a little turquoise on this blue here too. A little turquoise blue here. Let's see, there we go. So there's this, there's our hills right like that. We're not going to get too, too crazy, right? So we're saying that happened there. All right, now it's all still wet. So she wanted to know what can you still do when it's wet? I might come, I can come up here a little bit with this hill and bring it up a little more like that. Okay. And I can take a little bit of um, um, luminous rose, and I can add it to some blue like that, a little bit of luminous rose, and I some blue like that. 
and I can add, take some white paint like that and I've got this pretty purpley color see that and I can come back now, now it's still wet so be careful and I'm going to just suggest that there's a maybe there's a some hills back here like this that are sort of out of focus there you go like that that's the those are background hills farther things are away the lighter they are all right so you don't want anything too crazy now I've got to dry this because nothing else can happen until I dry it the only reason I wanted to save this for a premiere was because there is does have to be some drying time in it it's going to be probably quite a lot when you start putting pellet knife work on it. Yeah, so there you go, like that. So we're just saying that here's some like background hills like that. So I'm going to dry that, but you can see how we've got it darker at the top, lighter at the bottom. Yes and yes? All right, let's give it a dry. All right, now I want to, I'm going to, it's still a little tacky, but it's probably close enough. We want it, I want a color called um, buff titanium. I think I've got one in here somewhere. Well, we had it earlier. Did we? You know, I don't know what happens to the paints. They always yeah, they disappear. get, they fall behind things. And then there's a, and someone's going to write and say, should have all your materials out before you start. So we could pause again, John, and then I could find the material so people can, the sound of me banging around is always entertaining. She's like, where's the buff titanium? Where's the buff titanium? Well, I don't know where the buff titanium is. Is it next to your palette there on the... That's titanium white, okay? So here, we're just going to take some time. We're just going to make some because I just don't have any patience for this. All right, so here it goes. Here's some white, and I'm going to take out the palette knife and a little tiny, uh, let's take a little palette knife like this, and we're going to take a little bit of raw umber and yellow oxide like that, not very much, and we're going to mix those colors together. We're going to take, that, take the white out of the white. Let's take a little bit of yellow oxide like that. There you go. So, there, that's perfect, okay, with me? Beautiful, a little bit of raw umber with that. Well, it looks like buff titanium. What? That looks like buff titanium. It does, well, I'm just saying, it's just, I get lazy, but it is, but we're not gonna mix it that. Now we're gonna come up here, and we're gonna say that we've got a, uh, some clouds. Now the trick with this, got to tell you there's a trick with this and that is understanding where your clouds are going to go so if I know my clouds let's see that's going to be too that's that brush that chalk piece is going to be too heavy for that so we'll use some um, we'll use a new pastel because that's softer I don't want to gouge in here I want to say that I've got something up here like that is where my clouds are going to go so I'm just going to kind of do a shape so I sort of know where I'm going I'm going to come up here like that like that there you go okay a little bit of light so a little bit more white with that paint not too much but just enough not quite the same value. There you go. Have a variance. There you go. So that is that. And then let's see. Let's take some um, zinc white, which is very uh, translucent. We'll take a bit of that and just do. Remember, clouds are water vapor. So you don't want anything too thick. You've got to have it dissipate out. All right, and then I might say I want a little bit of this blue color with that. Here, can you see what I'm doing here? Just taking some of this other color that I had like that and saying, Pulling it up into the clouds like that. Do 
Now you you've got just seconds to work with this. You can't if you keep going over it, you'll you'll end up with something you don't want. So you just we're putting a little shadow right there, but that's pretty that's pretty much it. That's all we're doing there. Now I want a little mauve color, so I'm gonna take some of that pink and add to that blue and white. And I want some um what's that luminous rose color? There you go, and I want some purple I want a purple color like that, right? A little bit more of that luminous rose. There, and some white. There we go. There we go. There we go. So kind of squish that all up. Now, I'm going to say that up here, that's our clouds. And that's it. That's all we're going to do. So the painting's done. Hope you enjoyed it. Oh. <laughs> there you go. All right. So we're saying that those are our clouds. That's a little thick up here. Um, don't know what just fell down, but I'm sure it's not important. It. No. Huh? It's not important. I hope it wasn't. So here's a little bit of white up here, too. There you go. All right, so that's that's my clouds. And now, before I go much further, I don't want to, um, I'm going to just wipe off the palette knife and I'm going to dry this. That's key. This has got to be dry. All right. Now, when you say dry, you're basically just skinning it over so you can... Yeah, mostly, yeah. yeah. So that's not really dry. You're right, John. That's not really dry, but it's it's skinned over enough. So you're not so you can't mush it around again. Yeah, you're not gonna. Yeah, you want to kind of stay away from that. All right. You definitely want to stay away from that. And uh, I want some phthalo green out, which we'll do later. And um, here's some phthalo blue. Now I'm going to do some brushwork because um, I want to define some of this a bit more. So I'm going to take the phthalo blue and, and um, white. You see that's kind of a nice bright color. I'm going to come up here like that and say maybe that there's a little bit of water on the brush. I'm going to define this. Um, this uh, pill I care a little bit better. Let's see. All right, there you go. So we're just going to say there's the that's the um, uh, I didn't finish that off very well. I'm going to come up here and say, "Here's my hill." All right, so just bring that up like that. So we're just starting to create some depth in here. All right, so that was the whole idea behind that. And here's some zinc white. I'll just lighten this up. Um, zinc is your transparent white, and if you need to push something back, and make it look like it's out of the out of focus, and just not, you know, way in the background. Then that's what you do. That's what the zinc white's for. Okay, so let's take some yellow oxide and white. And come up here and paint in our uh, maybe a little bit of marigold with that yellow oxide, and make sure you have a don't have any blue on your brush, or you'll have a green beach, not a white one. We're gonna come up here like this and suggest that our beach goes this way. Take a little bit of white paint with that. Say this is a little bit lighter. 
maybe a little cat orange. So the cadmium orange is one of my new favorite colors now. I put that in almost everything. I'm going to just say that this beach is coming around like that. Yes and yes. And there's the sink and yellow oxide here. And I got that on there pretty thick. All right. And then the background of this is um, I'm going to take some ultramarine blue and magenta and make kind of a purple color. All right. And I want to say that there's a darker purple right back in here, kind of a purple blue that's going back here like this. Lots of different colors in this. And then let's take um, uh, phthalo green. And, and um, blue, tiny bit of yellow, and say there's a some green greenery right here, and then just brush is still wet. Just add some lighter green here like that, and just come on up there and suggest that this is this is your background. There's some cad yellow light. I'll put a little of that right there. And I'm putting all the paint on very thick. All right, that's all going on very, very thick. So even though it's not palette knife, we're putting it on really thick. All right. Then I know I've got some dark green in here. And then I've got some light green right in this area here like that. So that's the yellow and phthalo green. That's coming right here like that. Um, so let's do ultramarine blue and phthalo green and say that right up in this area here, right by our beach like this, we've got something dark. Come all the way down like this in front of where the beach goes. Okay. Um, and I know I've got something dark right there. Ultramarine blue and thalo green make a nice dark green color. That's part of this color in here like that. I wipe the brush off, get some marigold color and a little bit of cad orange and just put that right there and say I want something a little bit brighter right here. And we can come back with a brighter color after we do that. I'm just sort of putting in the colors. And this is our sort of a Holbein light green, but you can add just more yellow to phthalo green and get this color too. So again, we're putting in the layers on this painting. And you see how it's interesting how we're creating depth here, yes? And we really haven't done anything. So we'll just bring the green down here like that. And people always say, I never know when to dry. Well, anytime you're going to go from a complementary color, you want to dry. So you've forgotten. And some of you are going, I don't remember what she said a complementary color was. <laughs> so complementary color is any color that's opposite on the color wheel. For instance, light green and purple are complementary colors. If you put them together, you get brown. You get a green and orange or red, and bl a turquoise blue and light orange. Those are all complementary colors. And if you mix, if you have turquoise blue and orange next to each other, chances are you're going to get a muddy color. So if you want to avoid muddy colors, what are you going to do? Wash your brush You're going to wash the brush. Either use two brushes, one for your dark colors, one for your complementary colors. But best thing is to dry off it, which is we're going to do that right now. Experience a truly unique and personalized approach to learning with our Academy of Fine Art and Acrylic Painting, located at PaintingWithGinger.com, where we offer an array of distinctive features tailored to meet the individual needs of each artist. Among our most sought-after offerings is personal art coaching, often referred to as PACs. The PACs are provided by none other than the esteemed master acrylic artist, Ginger Cook.
Students can easily email photos of their artwork, either in progress or completed, and receive invaluable feedback and suggestions from Ginger herself. This one-on-one -on -one guidance enables our students to refine their skills and elevate their artistic abilities. Our academy goes above and beyond by providing personalized short videos, known as video packs, where students can send in their own unique artwork from personal references and photos for expert suggestions and guidance. This tailored support ensures that every artist can grow and excel in their preferred style and subject matter. Staying current and up-to-date, our Academy Library is continuously updated with new releases that reflect the trending paintings and subjects that our students are eager to learn. In 2023, we've expanded our course offerings to include portraits, people, and more, such as painting design instruction, especially for our Purple members. Our diverse range of subjects spans from classic art tutorials featuring world-famous artists like Chase, Cezanne, and Tholo, to contemporary trends in decor and themes. All styles of art are encompassed within our academy, including realism, impressionism, romanticism, and stylized art. Each student is made to feel special with our one-on-one -on -one personal art coaching available for our red, blue, and purple membership levels, starting at under $50 a month. There's no doubt that our Academy of Fine Art and Acrylic Painting stands out as the most unique art school on the Internet. Don't miss the opportunity to become a part of our artistic community and elevate your talents with our unparalleled guidance and support by visiting paintingwithginger.com. Okay. So I'm to paint our waves in, which we're going to do next, we're going to say that we know the flowers are going to come to here, right, like that. So we want to look, look at the arrows here. So you're going to do this and this. And so you've got a wave coming like that. And then you've got another one coming like that. And just kind of and fanning out doing this, right? Okay, so you've got, you've got one, two, three... And then this is coming, actually this area is going to be kind of dark blue. We can add it. So you, can, you want to have your, um, everything's going to curve up. Does that make sense? Curving up, yes. We kept all that flat, so the rest of this is going to curve up, right? Like that. So, you know, you got a map. So, here's a, um, Here's a palette knife. I'm going to take the phthalo green. You can see what a beautiful green color that has a little turquoise blue to that. All right, and I'm going to come this way. And I'm going to push down like that. A little bit more white with that. Push that way, there you go. And then we're gonna say some phthalo blue and white. We're gonna say it's going this way to meet it. And if we want to be the last of the big spenders, we can take some white here and uh, just suggest it's there. That's zinc white. We can do a little bit of and you could put this on afterwards too when that dries. Okay, so that's the that's the first layer. Remember, when 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 um, waves are the highest, like this, this is where they're the darkest, right? Like that. Okay. And then we need um, more ultramarine blue. It takes a lot of paint to use um, uh, to, to to demonstrate something like this. You use about six times more paint when you're using um, 
uh, palette knife as you would otherwise. So for those of you who just like watching it and thinking, I just don't feel like, you know, doing that, we understand, right? So here's the, um, let's see, sure we have enough white out places, because you need a big flat surface to do this, to mix your colors. So um, let's see, wipe off the excess paint like that, start with ultramarine blue and white like that. And uh, I'm going to start with this wave right here like that. that make sense? It does indeed. A little bit of white and phthalo green, just barely. This is like baking a cake. You just have to be so careful with the, with your colors. Okay. It's a delicate touch. Yeah, you would just, you could, you can overdo it. Okay, so now we know. That now we want this sort of um, lighter blue back here. Still keeping the same curve. Doing the same same thing, but it's just a little bit of combination of thalo blue and thalo green and um, and white. It's a little bit lighter. There you go, like that, something like that, right? Okay, so um, we haven't put the white on yet, but we will, all right? But that's um, kind of a good start on our water. Uh, let's see, I want some, gonna wipe off the brush and just Take a little light color here, like this. I want something lighter right here. Barely touch it. See how pretty that is? We barely touched it. Okay. Very, we're very inviting. Yeah. Already. Yeah. So now we're going to dry it before we get too crazy, right? We're just going to dry it. A lot of drying in this picture, you guys. That's why we did it as premiere, so we could dry it. So I'm going to take the brush, one of the little de brushes from um, Raphael. Lafayette, Raphael, and this is called the Textura D brush, as Ginger likes to call it, the brush. The brush. And we want a little zinc white and just kind of flatten that out. And we want to create, right up in here, we want to create some mist. Mountain kind of mist. Separate the mountain mist, separate the. Um, one little hill from another. See how I did that? That's um, that will make a difference when we have our tree there. So um, just make little circles like that. So there's a, do you see how that kind of created a, like a little area where it's um, one, one mountain is behind another like that. So, because I'm going to have a tree here, I'd like something a little bit lighter when I do that. Let's just make this. There we go. So something like that. So I've got, I've got that. And then I want to take 
red set. Then I want to take some white and a little tiny bit of yellow oxide, a tiny bit of cad 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 orange, or just cadmium orange, yeah, and more white. I'm using an older palette because we're doing so much of this mixing, and I want to come back here like this and add this light area here like this. See, kind of brighten that, that bank up a little. There, right? Sometimes it's nice to have that. Take a little bit of yellow and orange and I want to come up here like this and just Put that on, just hold it very flat. It's a perfect one to get a palette knife effect with because you can hold that brush flat and it gives that effect without actually having to use a knife. Everybody thinks, well, I have to use a palette knife. No, you don't. <laughs> you don't. Sorry, you don't. Don't be crazy. You don't have to use a palette knife. But, uh, but you do want to watch your lights and darks. Like, for instance, I might want a little bit of white here just for interest. Okay, and I'll just put that in. And I know that I want a little bit of white right here where my beach is. And uh, I might want some white up by my... Um, well, I know I do. Just by my clouds, I might want to say that there's... Again, you think just because you used a palette knife, you have to... You can, you can, you can make changes. You're not married to anything. Hey, wait a minute. Well, not married to the pain or oh, okay. whatever you did, right? You're not married to that, right? So... That's just something you can, you still have the feeling of the texture in the, in the, in the, um, but you're not, this is like zinc white. So again, if you didn't get quite the, the cloudy, uh, that, that you wanted, why well, you can, well, that's interesting. I didn't really want that. Where'd that color come from? Well, you know, there's a lot of colors on this palette that weren't, you know, when we, I elected not to get a clean palette, right? I took a chance that I'd mix colors I didn't want. You might right. want to let that baby dry a little bit. But um, that's that's easy enough to do. It can just take it off. Because I just wanted a little something a little bit lighter right there, right? Just like that. There you go. Just can have some color. Just wanted something lighter right there for my clouds. That's pretty. Yes and yes. Okay. I didn't really need much. Just needed something. All right. So I can take the palette knife again. And uh, here it is. And I've got the I've got white now. I want to do a, a wave of you know, breaking. So I'm going to bring this white over here like that so I can flatten out my brush or my knife. So I flatten all this out, see? Wipe everything off and then hold it up just on the edge like that. Do you see that? I'm going to be doing something like that. Hold it up and then I'm going to roll it. So I'm going to come up here on this wave like this. I'm going to roll this over. You're putting it in the crashing waves. I'm putting in the, putting in that, and I can say the same thing happened here, like this, just a touch of on this one. Just catch the peak on this. You see what I'm doing? And then if I got too much, make sure you've got the same color. I can break it up with. Like that. Woo. Huh? How cool is that? Yeah? Then, we can then 
paint in the bank, you know, the, um, the shoreline like this. See? We can say it just came in. And now we've got a pretty good Don't be afraid to, to to add color. All right, like that. So there we go. So we've got some good color. And we got some good wave chop, yes and yes. All right, now, this is pretty good here. I'm going to put in a tree. <laughs> yeah? You're going, really, seriously? You're going to put in a tree? Yeah, they've got to have a tree here, right? Got to have the tree. So. That's what it's all about. One thing we might do is just decide where we want the tree. I think that never hurts. You can just put a few dollars. Do, do you want to dry everything first? Well, th this is, doesn't need to dry. Okay. The tree, where the I'm tree just thinking goes. that your arm is going to go into the waves. That's all. Oh, yeah, thank you. Well, but, you know, we're going we're gonna to chance it. Okay. Now, I like living on the edge with you. We're going to live on the edge, baby. All right. So we're going to say that my tree is start down here, right? Just right, right, right about here. 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 Where it is. <laughs> See, that's why, that, that's why I needed to know. And then it's going to come up this way. That's why it's best to draw it in first. I'll just do a few marks like that so I know where it's going to go, right? Then I'm going to take some magenta in ultramarine blue. Okay. And then we're going to um, start like that. So far, so good. Keep uh, renewing your paint when you're doing this. You're using that little model, uh, little dagger brush. All right, so we're saying that that's, let's put some more magenta on this tree. Um, if you have to, put a little water on the brush so that it flows for you. You could use a dagger brush, you can use this brush. All right, so we're saying there's our tree. Cool, right? And then what do we know? Well, we know that we've got some ultramarine blue and phthalo green kind of back here like this, kind of in a thick pattern like this. Okay. We know that for sure. So I always have to ask myself, what do I know for sure here when I'm doing something like this? Because as fun as it is to do the trees, and we, we want to have a dust, we, I think I want that mauve color for the, um, the Holbein mauve is a beautiful color for that this tree, that and then the Holbein pink. So I'm going to go ahead and just put this on my canvas board here and then I want to I want to dry that tree all right before we do anything else okay. 
And um, I'm looking at this, as I look at my painting, I see some stuff I want to do. So I'm going to take a little bit of the white here and I want to come up. I want this, this wave to be higher. I needed that higher up on the picture. There we go. All right, so tree. So we're going to start with the dark color, and then we'll put the light, which is what we like to do, right? So a little bit of this mauve purple and a little ultramarine blue. So the two colors we want. And I'm going to, using this knife, flat knife, I'm going to come up here like this and just shake the brush, shake the, the shake this, kind of shake it like that. Wow. Cool, right? Very effective. Okay. So that's that part of the tree. Yes and yes. All right. So I'm going to dry that because I'm going to put the pink on top of it. That make sense? So that has to dry. This is why we never could do this live. Now you want to make sure you have a clean palette knife. All right, and we want the luminous rose color. All right, now we're going to do white, luminous rose, and a little bit of ultramarine blue, and not mix it very well. We're going to come up here like, like this and say, here's this tree. More luminous rose here. I think I'm out of color. Pretty though, huh? Very much so. There's a real, this is, this is a knack of just like um, anything else. You've got to understand how to, how much pressure to put and how to mix the colors. Okay. Here's some white and magenta. Here's a little, well, here's a little bit purple and magenta. That's nice. That's a, one of the deeper colors we could do. But you don't want to get too carried away. Just do it and stop, right? That's the secret. Just do it, and then that's it. If you need to come over later, when it's dry, and add a color, you can do it. And a really bright one, like for instance, um, um, Holbein makes a um, an opera called Luminous Opera. And uh, well, that'll brighten things up for you. You've got to mix that with white. When you put that with white. You've got that's it. That's all we're doing with that color. So, um, cool. And then I might take a little bit of the cad red medium. Put it on my brush like this, or my palette knife like this. Flatten it out and then take an edge like this. See, it's a little bit on edge. Now I've got a whole video, the really good one, on how to use the edge of your knife to...
to make a um, thin line like this. There's our tree. See? Cool, right? Alright, now we're going to put in some flowers. But um, I'd like something even a little brighter here. So I'm going to take some yellow and green, that light green color, and some yellow. And I want to do this with a palette knife on this grass here. There, just over that, see? But then I want something a little darker going on up here. There we go. So that's our uh, there. So the next thing, the last thing to do is we're going to add the flowers. And this is where we're going to do something a little bit different. Yet another technique? Yeah, we're just going to take all this paint and uh, pull out the stops with the, this is modeling paste. Or molding paste. Molding paste. I keep calling it modeling paste. It's molding paste. You mold things, I guess, with it. So we want to have something kind of nice and thick. So I take about a tablespoon of that out. That's a big tablespoon. Well, that's what I'm taking out. <laughs> that's why you don't cook. I knew it. <laughs> Keep okay. you out of the kitchen. Yes, yes, and yes. So we're going to do that, and now we're going to do. We're going to mix it with some purple and ultramarine blue. And could you have done the whole painting in this? Yes. You would have saved a little bit by doing it that way instead of using all your... Saved you a little bit of paint, right? So we're going to come in here like this, and we're going to say that this is... Uh, these are going to be our flowers. And what purple is that one? That's that mauve with ultramarine blue. Mm. It's almost as deep as the... Uh... Yeah, it's as deep as the um, the dozening, but it's not going to... Um, won't be as glary. It won't be as glary. Okay, so that's our... And I'm looking to see where else I could put this color. Could I put any up in my tree? Maybe a couple places. Okay, there you go. So now um, we have to. We want to put the pink flowers on top, right? Yeah, but you have to draw so that. In order to do that, we have to dry this. Yes and yes. I would think so. Okay, you ready? Ready. Discover a world of vibrant colors and captivating designs with Ginger Cook's exclusive range of merchandise. At gingersartandgiftshop.com, we bring you a fantastic assortment of unique and stylish items showcasing Ginger's masterful artwork. From everyday essentials like t-shirts and mugs to fashionable accessories like purses and even engaging puzzles, there's something for everyone in our eclectic collection. Our t-shirts are not just your regular tees, they are wearable art. Made from high-quality soft fabric and available in a variety of sizes and colors, they are perfect for making a statement while staying comfortable. Each design is inspired by Ginger Cook's vibrant and enchanting art, so you'll be the talk of the town when you flaunt one of our extraordinary shirts. Looking to kickstart your day with a burst of creativity and energy? Our exclusive Ginger Cook art mugs are just the ticket. Sip your favorite beverage from a beautifully designed mug, each featuring one of Ginger's stunning masterpieces. The vivid colors and intricate details on each mug make them a delightful addition to your morning routine or a perfect gift for the art enthusiast in your life. Why not elevate your style with our collection of exquisite purses adorned with Ginger Cook's artwork? 
These purses are the perfect fusion of fashion and fine art, making them a must-have accessory for any wardrobe. From casual outings to formal events, our purses will surely make you stand out in the crowd with their striking colors and captivating designs. And for those who enjoy a good challenge, our Ginger Cook art puzzles are a perfect choice. Dive into a world of color and creativity as you piece together each stunning work of art. These puzzles are not only entertaining, but also a fantastic way to appreciate the intricate details of Ginger's artwork. So what are you waiting for? Head on over to gingersartandgiftshop.com and explore our fabulous range of products featuring Ginger Cook's breathtaking art. With our fun and friendly shopping experience, you're sure to find something that captures your imagination and brings joy to your life. Don't miss out on these one-of-a-kind offerings and join the Ginger Cook art craze today. Okay, so it's not dried, but it is skinned over. Um, and I didn't, I haven't showed you guys any of the artwork we've done. I think I've shown you some of the one, right? But um, we haven't shown anything on this one. I haven't shown. We sh haven't shown anything. Nope. Um, we got right into this. This is this is important. I wanted to, you know, we do a lot of things in our, you know, I teach a lot of different styles of painting. One of the things we're doing this year in acrylic painting with ginger in our academy is the um, our portraits and people and people doing different things. And this is our jazz uh, player, and that should be released by the time this video airs. I think so. That should yeah, be I out. think so. We're in July now. We're in July. That should be out. We've got some beautiful, just uh, beautiful, beautiful new uh, paintings coming up uh, this summer for you guys. And um, uh, some, some great uh, tips on how to paint people and portraits. Um, we're going to way back on this one. This was a... Um, a painting that um, uh, to 12 and 20, 12 by 24. It's impressionism. There's no palette knife on this, but it definitely is tiny little uh, bits of paint. And uh, uh, the uh, Day at the Races is the t title of this. And again, um, we'll have a we have downloadables for all our uh, tutorials. But if you buy the the downloadable when the tutorial is released, you, you get, you get a big discount and. That for that week, and and how do you know when we're releasing them? You've got to subscribe to our gazette, uh, uh, and that's on our website, uh, paintingwithginger.com. Just come over there and scroll on down to see where you subscribe to our newsletter. Make sure we send that out every Monday Central Time around noon. That gives you what the paintings are for the week. Also, we uh, put pictures of our travels and things like that. So it's fun. It's all kinds of, it's packed with information. It takes John a long time to make those and a checklist. They work on those together. They're marvelous uh, newsletters and you want it. They're free. So you sure want to get that and get it uh, and see what's going on. Not just on. Stay in the know. Stay in the know. And it also tells you what we're painting that night for YouTube too. So that's the day at the races, 12 by 24. And if anybody's interested in our, you know, owning any of my original paintings, you can use the contact us inquire about prices. At some point, we hope to have our um, our gallery site set up. Gallery site set up, but we don't have. Hopefully, it right we've been working right. on that while we're bouncing around the ocean. Right, now we're going to use the brush here again, and we're going to use that as a like a palette knife tool. Again, the Raphael de, de brush. De brush. De brush. So we're going to take the luminous rose. Great color. And I'm going to do magenta. I'm going to bring some of this magenta over here. And we're going to want white. And uh, we're going to start in the back a little bit here like that with a little bit of the uh, modeling paste. And we're just going to say back up here we've got some flowers. Take a little bit of white with that. We've got some flowers back there. Just always nice, yes. And uh, might have a few in here, but I'll probably come back with a brush and do those. But just maybe something here around the the tree like that. Now let's take this. Let's see, we also want, um, we want this color and we want, um, 
what other color uh okay, we have the luminous opera which we had put out let's put out a little of that we're going to have some bright colors in this picture all right and, and an orange we want the cadmium orange too that is such a great color I have some on this palette knife, maybe. I mean, over this here on this paper, I can grab some of that. Okay. And a little of this. Well, I don't have any yellow out. Use so much paint here. Where's our yellow? We need a light yellow. Cad yellow light's perfect. So those are the colors for our garden. And we're going to just plant some flowers now. So we'll start with them um, with magenta and white and the um, let's just come in here like this and just drop that on there. Just drop it down. Barely touch it, just drop and go. Barely touch it, just so let's skim over the top of that. The purple is your under underneath color. Um, as we go, we can take a little bit of um, this is your opera color because that's going on the top of this. Remember the lighter colors go on top. Here's the magenta. You can go up to what, a 50 50 mix mm -hmm. on the holding page? Yeah. There's a little of that magenta color as we come on back. See the magenta thing. purple. Our brightest ones are over here, but you can have a couple of these light dabs of color. Let's just do a little dark magenta. So I've got this pretty flower garden. Let's put a few of these colors over here too. All right, now I'm going to rinse the brush. And I need it a little bit wider. So here's my opera. I'm going to put a little yellow in it. I'm going to say I want something lighter up here. And that's interesting, isn't it? Because you put a little yellow with that and it gets, it makes this very interesting orange color. Boy, can you hear our thunder? All day long. We've been lucky so far with the electric. Knock on wood. Knock, knock. I want something a little brighter back here, too, maybe back over here of this tree, just to suggest it, but not so many. And then let's just do some more of this color, the um, the bright pink. See, these colors go so beautifully with these greens, don't they? And I know, and I want a little tiny brush now, and I'm just going to just put a few in just to over here, like just again, everything doesn't have to be palette knife. You can just say. You want to just 
have something growing here. Here's a little bit of um, cadmium orange. If you're going to drop it on purple, though, you have to be kind of careful because um, the purple will change the color of that if it's not um, dried in there like that. So I would say that um, just do some tiny ones like that. Just have it come up there, a couple little ones like that. Bring that up into the water like that. And my goodness, you've got, um, so you can come back and work on this tree a little bit if you need to. One of that kind of light blue there. And don't forget when you're doing something like this to um, do some tiny little leaves coming up. Your palette knife may do that for you, but if it doesn't, you want to have the, maybe on this side they're darker, but you have some little dots of something like that. Let's see. Just want a little bit of color on that tree. All right. Well, we're like 99.9% .9 done, but I want to bring these flowers around more towards here like that. Just kind of follow this garden and around, kind of curve it around like that. And uh, it's a couple of bits of light blue in there. Okay. All right. So we're just, I tell you guys, we're like 9.99% like done. We're just going to go around and do some finishing touches on our water. And uh, And I might bring my beach out a little further in a couple places so it's not so even. Let's see, I want actual titanium white to be able to move that out there. There we go. This was too much of a c curve. Does that make sense? We needed to break that shape up a little bit. I want you to know I'm exercising huge restraint. I haven't put any birds in yet. <laughs> oh, it won't be done without a bird or two. I just feel like, it, you know, maybe they ought to have a bird. What do you guys think? I right, like that. There's our water. Um, let's 
So if you're not totally happy with it, you can still change it. But I, I'm pretty much saying this can get really busy quick, and so you don't want to kind of overdo it. But um, let's get something darker here, kind of down here where this tree is. Bring something darker down here like that. But uh, I would say we're um, if we darken this. It just sort of brings your eye back down to wherever whatever's going on here. Let's see, where's the... All right. I think that's that's going to be it. I want to show everybody what this would look like in a frame, John, but I feel like that, that's how you would paint this uh, with a palette knife. I think it looks pretty darn good. Thank you. I think I could have something a little bit brighter back here in a couple places because this was dark, but but you know you do feel like it's um there we go. That's it. Something brighter. Nothing like color, is there? <laughs> Nothing like color to bring it all together. That, yeah, because I think these colors are also pretty. And uh, Occasionally you'll get something that's a little bit darker like that, which is a little bit more contrast right there. All right, you guys, that's that's how you'd paint this with a palette knife. Uh, John, if you'd pause for a minute, I want to get the... Um, yeah, we'll give it a dry and we'll... Put the frame, frame out. And oh, does everybody kind of see what we've done? Yes and yes? You kind of saw it at the beginning, but now you get to see it at the end. Well, you know how Ginger is. Hey, while you have a moment here as she's finishing this up, let's go ahead and press that subscribe button if you haven't done so. Hit the notification bell so that way you'll know when we drop another video. And hit the thumbs up. And don't forget to share this video and our other ones with all your friends and family and even your enemies. There's what? a bird. I, oh, a bird flew away. Well, I've got, I need a Pasca for that. Oh, I knew it. So close. But I, it just needed one right there to kind of break that. Just one bird? There might be more than one. I don't know. If you, <laughs> you get me my frame. Yes, my queen.
Okay. It's like your picture, isn't it? I think I got that leaf set far enough down. Yeah. You got five birds. Oh, look at there, huh? Okay, my queenies, we got a frame on there. Let me back her up. Not quite ready yet, and I just got a couple of things I got to do. <laughs> Every time I put a frame around it. Yes, yeah, all right. Little final touches here and there. That's yeah, all right. Okay. All right. That's all we're doing. That's it. We're done. You didn't sign it. No, I haven't uh, signed it, but I'm just saying I want to just... No. Um, That's exactly what I was thinking of putting it. Were you? Mm-hmm. So, all right. So we'll just... This, I want to show it at the end and at the beginning, so I want to just finish talking at the end of this and you know finish my whole spiel but um well you let me know when you're ready to do your last spiel i want to clap before so i can find where we are your spiel okay you ready yes, i'm ready okay so uh you can see how pretty this looks like in a frame it's just sort of fantasy colors. I mean, the flowers are a bit bright in the... But I'll tell you what, if you've ever seen ice plant, it gets bright like that. It really does. And you see how you can do uh, waves with a palette knife, and how you can use modeling paste to get extra thick... Well, molding paste to get extra thick um, areas of color. Um, you can um, you can see how, well, like, for instance, like, you know, you can do, <laughs> do, do something like this. So you, for that's, example... For example, you can, the thick and thin is one of the tricks, you know, a few things like that where you've got some thin branches and, you know, thicker lines and so forth. That's something to, you know, you can th uh, we'll see like that big glob of paint you wouldn't want, but um, just every once in a while you can just, sometimes the tiniest little bit of color can be extremely effective, right? Well, you're helping the eye move around. The yeah, viewer's eye. Just, yeah, and, and really it's not it's not much of anything. It's just you can come back afterwards and add a touch of color if you need to. You don't want to get it too busy. And uh, I think this is a really fun tutorial on how to use a, a palette knife. And um and it's a sort of it's has a, the feeling of the tropics, and I, you can see I added a couple birds, and because I mean, who doesn't need birds, right? I used a Posca pen, but you can also use a a brush like this too. Oops. Well, you could use a brush like this, but um, I had uh, never mind. I'm gonna just wipe that off. This is why you um, dry. You dry so that when you do something like that, you can just wipe it off, and it's still good, right? Here, where'd the Posca pen go? We'll just put that little bird right back. Well, that's why I like them for birds, because you can... It's really a good fine, fine good. control over it. Yeah, you can get... Remember, there's, when the birds are little or farther away, the bigger the bird is, the closer he is to you, right? So you've got, we've got some nice... I think we've got some nice birds uh, flying up here. It feels more like the ocean when you have that, right? So... Um, We've signed it right here. Um, let it dry for a few days, and uh, this can be varnished after a week. And I would use spray varnish by Golden to really uh, to varnish this. And um, don't forget for um, to check out the Art Sherpa st uh, store for your art supplies, and uh, to get get the brush.
You'll find a link. Well, Vernisol brush anybody's come out with in the longest time is that um, the brush. That that the brush, <laughs> and um, as we know it as as, as uh, and it's uh, the D Textura uh, by Raphael, and uh, you you want to try to get. I would get all the sizes. I just would, because that's the funnest. But don't you love this purple tree and these purple flowers? How cool is that? So I'd love to know what you guys thought about this. And if you, I hope we were with you on the premiere. Where were we with this painting, John? Uh, we're up in the Norway area. We're up in Norway. And sometimes Norway, Norway the nice. internet is a little bit... Um, we're at the top of the earth. It's a little bit hard to um, uh, to broadcast from there. But if not, just know we're with you in spirit. And thank our moderators for hanging out. And... Uh, we will see you next Monday for uh, another fabulous, fun painting. And hope you had fun today with us. Thanks, everyone. We'll see you next time around. Bye. The Karen Little Scholarship Fund, Empowering Artistic Dreams. At the Academy of Fine Art and Acrylic Painting, we believe in nurturing and empowering artistic talent, even during times of financial hardship. With the Karen Little Scholarship Fund, we aim to provide a beacon of hope and opportunity for aspiring artists facing financial challenges. This unique scholarship program not only supports the dreams of these artists, but also contributes to their mental well-being and social interactions through our enriching art programs. The Karen Little Scholarship Fund is fueled by the generosity of our donors, and we are proud to match every dollar donated, effectively doubling the impact of each contribution. This enables us to offer financial assistance to even more deserving artists, helping them join our esteemed Academy of Fine Art and Acrylic Painting. By supporting these artists, we also create an environment where they can thrive, learn, and collaborate with their peers, fostering their artistic growth and personal development. Participating in an art program like acrylic painting offers numerous benefits for both mental well-being and social interactions. Creating art can be a therapeutic outlet for self-expression, allowing individuals to channel their emotions and thoughts in a healthy and productive manner. Moreover, art programs provide a supportive community where artists can interact, exchange ideas, and form lasting connections, enhancing their social lives and networks. As a token of our appreciation for your generous donations, we are excited to offer you the chance to win an original Ginger Cook painting in a random drawing. For every $25 donated during the quarter, you will receive a ticket that is placed in a fishbowl. At the end of each quarter, we draw four tickets and announce the lucky winners. These exquisite paintings not only serve as a beautiful reminder of your contribution, but also symbolize the lasting impact you have made in the lives of our scholarship recipients. Together, through the Karen Little Scholarship Fund, we can continue to uplift and inspire artists in need, helping them to achieve their dreams and contribute to the vibrant world of art. Your support has the power to change lives, spark creativity, and build a brighter future for the artistic community. So join us in this extraordinary journey of fostering artistic talent and transforming lives, one donation, one artist, and one masterpiece at a time. Please note that the Academy of Fine Art and Acrylic Painting, including the Karen Little Scholarship Fund, is not a registered 501c3 organization under the United States Internal Revenue Code. Consequently, any donations made to the Karen Little Scholarship Fund or the Academy are not tax deductible for federal income tax purposes. We sincerely appreciate your support and generosity in helping aspiring artists achieve their dreams through our scholarship program. Drawing rules to participate, you must be 18 years of age or older. Regional rules and conditions apply. Void where prohibited. Disclaimer, the scholarship drawing is not affiliated with YouTube or any Google products in any way at all.